getting into details with respect to Spark structured streaming, let us go through the details about streaming technologies. These four are different moving parts with respect to building stream using streaming technologies. They are nothing but ingestion, real-time processing, databases, visualization. Ingestion is nothing but get data from source like web server logs into some intermediate layer such as Kafka topic or GMSQ. Once data is ingested into that middle layer, we tend to apply logic on top of the data so that data can be processed in real time. Once data is processed in real time, the output is ported to a database so that we can visualize either by using traditional BI tools or custom solutions. These are the key parts when building stream data pipelines. We also have frameworks where multiple moving parts are available out of the box which we can level and build these streaming data pipelines in quicker fashion. We will understand those details as we proceed further. Before getting those details, let us understand what these streaming data pipelines are from the enterprise perspective. Given enterprise, we typically build options for web or mobile. If it is browser, it is mobile, the client is a smartphone. Once clients start interacting with the mobile or web application, the request will typically go to a middle layer, but web or server. If it's application, we might deploy this on Tomcat or WebLogic. If it is JavaScript based application, we might have it on Node.js, which is behind a Apache web server or Nginx, so on and so forth. So there will be a middle layer which will serve the clients. Depending upon uh, the nature of the request from the client, there can be some business logic which will be executed. And as part of that process, uh, data might have to be persisted permanently or good. And for that, we can use some database. It can be traditional RDBMS or NoSQL database, depending upon the nature of the application. All these web apps as well as databases will be connected with a, a network switch and firewall within the organization. Except the clients, everything will be under uh, firewalls within a given organization that with multiple switches. One for public network and another for private networking between these uh, servers on which a web app is running or databases. That being said, let us redraft this pic like this where we have web app servers co-located database because network switches and all doesn't generate any data that is relevant for the business. Whereas servers also might generate some uh, can be used for analysis. If you actually think about Amazon.com, there can be hundreds and thousands of uh, users who might be logging into the Amazon.com on a regular basis and searching for products. However, once they search for products, not all visitors can be buyers. There can be many folks who might drop off in the middle. If they transact with Amazon.com and buy a product, the data will be available in database because it's uh, transactional in nature and hence the data has to be stored in database for reliability process. In a given enterprise, we typically build applications for web mobile. If it, uh, the client is browser, if it is mobile, the client is... Yes. Once clients start interacting with the mobile or web application, the request will really go to a middle layer, which is nothing but web or app server. If it is a Java based on Tom or web logic, if it is JavaScript based application, we might have it on Node.js, which is behind a Apache web server or engine and so forth. There will be a middle layer that will serve the clients. And depending upon uh, the nature of the from the client, there can be some business logic which will be executed. And as part of that process, the uh, data might have to be persisted permanently or retrieved. For that, we can use some database. It can be traditional RDBMS or NoSQL database, depending upon the nature of the application. All these web app servers as well as devices will be connected with a, a network switch and firewall within. Except the clients, everything will be under uh, uh, firewalls within a given organization where they will be connected with multiple switches. One for public network and another for private networking between these uh, servers on which a web app is running or databases are running. That being said, let us redraft the pic like this. Here we have web app servers co-located with database because switches and all doesn't generate any data that is relevant for the business. Whereas web app servers also might generate some relevant data which can be used for analysis. Let's take an example here. If you actually think about Amazon.com, there can be hundreds and thousands of users who might be logging into the Amazon.com on a regular basis asking for products. However, once they search products, not all visitors. There can be many folks who might drop off in the middle. 
if they transact with amazon.com and buy a product the data will be available in database because it's a transactional in nature and hence the data has to be stored in database for reliability purposes however if the user is just a visitor if he is not buying any product in amazon.com there is no point in storing that database however there can be a set of users who just come to amazon.com search for the product and might drop off in the middle which means they not transact with amazon.com by me and purchasing a product that information is called as visitor and we should not store that into a database because it is not transactional in nature if we start storing the data in a database then our database size will explode and we uh, we will run into manageability issues for that reason we should not log or store the information with respect to visitor traffic into the database unless and until there are transactions uh, however instead of storing in a database we could write into log files using framework such as 4j and we can capture from those log files and we should be able to store in a ml database and then we should be able to process the data to run analytics on top of these web or app server logs along with the data that is uh, there in the database that being said we have these two crucial uh, data sources which actually generate data for uh, our analysis and then we have to which data has to loaded so that analysis can be done the targets can be files databases data clusters external applications so on and so forth files are typically used if you want to give the data for some other external uh, application which might not be part of the organization one of the way we can interact with the external the data is via files there has to be a framework so that we delta and share delta at regular interval with the external vendors or users of this data and some type of target is database it can be a data warehouse based database or traditional rms uh, again we have to ingest data in databases so that we can either analyze this further Uh, on top of that data and the type of environment where we put the data to is nothing but big data clusters if the data volumes are very high we have to fall back on big data clusters so that we can perform heavy data processing and the set of uh, targets are nothing but external applications such as uh, tipco or kafka whatever it is where we can actually share the data uh, using rest api applications f- so that they can uh, process the data further and use for their use cases that being said we have the source of the target and we have to get data from the source which are nothing but web server logs or databases into these targets that's where the data integration comes into picture we might have to integrate data in real time or batch for batch we typically get data from database by data of database at regular intervals and for that we use tools like informatica abnisho etc for real time we get data from web server logs or database logs if it is database logs and if we are using proprietary databases such as we have tools like golden gate to get data from database we might not be able to get data using open source technologies due to the restrictions from the vendors who provide those databases so we can use golden gate based logs and we can uh, integrate with whatever target want or we get data from web or app server logs using we can do what we want with that data after pushing it to the target so this is how um, we typically get the data f- uh, within an enterprise from the source into the target and when it comes to the current topic which is nothing but streaming technologies we typically get in real time predominantly from web or app server logs into the targets by going through all these four steps data ingestion processing storing data into the databases and visualizing on top of that data either by using custom solutions or out of the box uh, bi such as tableau let's get into the details about what are the options we have at each and every layer when addition, there are many technologies which are used in ingesting data in real time one of the logstash it can read data from different sources but that source has to be a tl log file you can apply simple row level transformation such as converting date formats masking some of bit values such as social security numbers first five digits etc Uh, in each message uh, logstash can work with technologies in building streaming pipelines kafka either we can put data directly into a we can integrate with other technology build streaming pipelines another alternative is flume it run, the agent might run on the source where the data is generated or it might run on the target however the age divide into source channel and sync we can actually specify the uh, source details using source of agent if the 
in a different world than wherever is being generated. Then we use team based approach to get the data from uh, remote source if if we have to get data from web server logs and then we can actually sync data equal target or a remote target again based upon the nature of the sync we just have to pass the appropriate information so the agent connect to the sync and push the data into that sync it supports many sources and syncs can work with other technologies in building streaming pipelines such as CAF. We can use a concept of interceptor to achieve this role level transformations capability. However, it is not very straightforward. That being said, using Flume with data to technologies like Storm, Flink, Spark, Streaming, etc. to run real time streaming analytics. On top of Flume Logstash, another altering data from sources like WebSox is Kafka come with Kafka topic. When it comes to Kafka topic, it is nothing but a false tolerant and high reliable intermediate data streaming mechanism. Anything but a queue, which is nothing but intermediate data structure. However, there is no out of the box uh, uh, solution to get data into Kafka topic. Either we have to use custom solutions such as applications built using uh, producer API and then ingest data into the Kafka topic or we can use plugins that comes as part of the Kafka ecosystem called Kafka Connect to ingest data into this topic. Kafka Connect is to read data from different sources and push messages to Kafka topic and also consume messages from Kafka topic and push to supported targets. So whenever there are involved while uh, getting data from Kafka top into targets we typically use Kafka that comes as part of the Kafka ecosystem. Kafka connect and topic together will facilitate us to get data from different types of sources to different types of things. Once data is in Kafka top if we have to perform any real-time streaming analytics we can use technologies like Kafka streams, Storm, Flink, Spark streaming or structured streaming etc. That be as part of Adatom we also have something called as Kinesis which comes with file holderless data streams and the service which comes as part of AWS analytics services which is very similar to Kafka. Kafka file host is like Kafka connect which will facilitate us to get data from web server logs into intermediate data structure called as Kinesis data stream. The way of using Kinesis is we don't need to have a dedicated cluster. We can just use AWS based plugs and we should do Kinesis data stream will be charged as you start using the Kinesis data stream instead of charging for uh, the cluster upfront. So these are the different alternatives which we used for ingesting data from web server logs into some intermediate layers. It can be a queue or a topic or when it comes to tools like Logstash we can even push data directly into the database as well. But typically when it comes to pipeline the output of the ingestion is to have data in an intermediate layer so that we have the flexibility requirement. Now let us talk about processing of the data which is being ingested to an intermediate layer. As the data come through tools like Logstash, Kafka, etc., we might want to perform standard transformations such as data cleansing, standardization, joins, aggregations, sorting, ranking, etc. While some of the different tools are capable of some of the transformations, they do not come up with all the features. Also, the ingestion might get delayed and make the flow unstable. So, if you don't uh, uh, fall back on much reliable uh, alternatives uh, and if you use two of these ingestion tools, our ingestion might get delayed and also the flow might be. That's why instead of using out of the box of the ingestion reliable uh, technologies which meant for processing the data in streaming fashion and they are nothing but Spark streaming or Spark structured streaming, a module built as part of Spark, Flink, Storm, Kafka, part of, uh, Kafka ecosystem and more. Even when it comes to Amazon, we have uh, like used to process data lightweight or we can actually plug in the data in streaming technologies such as Spark streaming, Flink, Storm uh, and we can actually process the data even from Kinesis. Once the data is processed, we have to store data in databases to persist and build a visualization layer on top of the process data. For databases, we can use RDBMS such as Oracle, MySQL, yes, etc. Data warehouses such as Teradata, Redshift, etc. NoSQL databases such as HBase, Cassandra, MongoDB, DynamoDB, etc. Or such basic databases such as Elasticsearch. So we can use whatever database technology we feel is feasible for our streaming data pipelines. So we get data from web server logs or some other source into intermediate structure 
and then we process data using one of these technologies and store the data in one of these databases. As the data is stored in database, we can visualize on top of the data using custom solutions with tools like D3 or Kibana or we can even use standard reporting such as Tableau. However, it is not going to use standard reporting tools uh, to visualize on top of uh, data generated because of streaming data pipelines. Now, let us talk about frameworks. Frameworks will actually combine some of these moving parts and give us an integrated solution which can be leveraged and build the streaming pipelines uh, faster. So when it comes to Kafka ecosystem, we have Kafka Connect to get the data from web server logs and to be able to use Kafka streams data by reading data from Kafka topic and writing into the database. So all those reasonable features such as uh, reading are pro out of the box. We just have to focus on business logic. So data can Yelk stack. It is a holistic. We can to get data from web server log and then into the elastic search. We can use concept of interceptors, which can apply the transform on top of the data, which kind of a Confirm more than coding and once the rules are applied the data will be stored into the database based upon configuration and the database can be search so once we get data using log stack elastic search we can have kibana point to that elastic search and with minimal configuration and coding we should be able to see the reporting so if we just want to see simple executed dashboards elk stack is very very uh, simple and uh, useful and we should be able to come up with uh, the dashboards in a very quick fashion however if you have to perform some advanced transformations especially at scale then elk stack might not be the feasible uh, framework to use on top of this kafka ecosystem and elk we also have hdf and map again these provide some of the capabilities with respect to ingesting the data applying transformations and storing the data into the databases they do provide any visual features as part of aws we have several moving parts which can be configured easily because of the strong integration between all these moving parts and then we can actually work very quickly we can use dynamodb or s3 for uh, getting data in streaming fashion we can use uh, if you ha have to process data and if the data is lightweight then we can use the functions that comes as part of aws in heavyweight transformations then we can use aws process the data streaming fashion and store the data in target database uh, we want to store we have highlighted some of the popular frameworks almost all the top vendors such as cloudera google azure etc have necessary to build streaming pipelines we just need to identify the relevant component and use depend our requirement as we understood all the different moving parts with respect to streaming list now let us see how we can actually build streaming data using spark structured streaming for re real-time processing here this will be primarily on real-time processing anything else